Welcome to another video. This is an exciting one as we'll be adding in presence detection in my home assistant at a fraction of the retail cost you'd be paying for the likes of Acara FP1 or products like this. Links to the products and code will be in the description but without wasting any more time let's get straight into this. For this project we'll need an ESP device. Here I'll be using a D1 Mini as you can see on the left and on the right is a HLK LD1115H which is a millimetre wave detector. To make this as simple as possible and prevent the need for soldering, I bought these devices with the pins already attached. This means we'll just need four jumper wires to link these two devices together. For the millimetre wave detector, or presence detector in this case, we'll need to link up the VCC for the power input, ground, which will ground the device, URX, which is receive, and UTX, which is transmit, to the D1 Mini. So working from left to right, 5V will link to VCC on the millimetre wave detector, ground will go to ground, receive will go to transmit, and transmit will go to receive. To power the D1 Mini we'll need a 5 volt micro USB, so any old phone charge cable will do. A point to note, while we're configuring the device the cable will need to transmit and receive data, but once we've finished configuring the device the micro USB will just need to power the device. First we need to get the ESP Home add-on. Head to this web page and click on the add-on button. Assuming the correct Home Assistant URL is already populated, click on open link. Hit install and wait for the add-on to install. When the add-on has installed, toggle on or off these options as you wish and press start to turn on ESP Home. Afterwards, click open web UI to redirect to the ESP Home page. From here, we need to add in our ESP device. You can do so through this web page. However, I've had more success adding devices using the ESP Web Tools page. Before starting, make sure the D1 Mini is connected to your PC via a micro USB cable. At this point, we don't want the presence detector wired up to the D1 Mini. This can cause issues, so leave it disconnected for now. When you're ready, click connect and select the COM port where your ESP device is connected. Press install and install again, then wait for ESP Home to flash to the D1 Mini. This initial flash will hold a basic configuration. This will be just enough information to make our device discoverable back on Home Assistant. Once we adopt the device on Home Assistant, we can then wire the presence detector back on the D1 Mini and paste in the full configuration file. Once the install is complete, we'll then be prompted to enter our Wi-Fi credentials. You'll either be given a drop down menu to select the SSID or you'll need to manually type in the SSID followed by your password. Click connect and the D1 Mini will attempt to connect to the Wi-Fi. If successful, the D1 Mini will now be discoverable within Home Assistant. Click on adopt and you'll be prompted to rename your device. This device will be used as a presence detector in my kitchen, so I'll give it the name Kitchen Presence. Click on install and the ESP Home add-on will then compile all the necessary files within your Home Assistant file structure. One thing I noticed after renaming the device, it didn't change the device's host name, which is going to cause issues later on in my config. So after this install, I clicked on the three dots, rename host name and match the host name so it was the same as the device name. When the log looks like this, the install is completed successfully. So from here, you can either click stop and go rename your host name if needed, or click on edit and continue with the config. After clicking on edit, you'll be taken to the YAML config page. To start off, make a copy of the current configuration and paste it somewhere like notepad so we can have a quick reference to it later. We then need to wipe this config clean and paste in the new configuration file. There's a few things we need to change. First is the device name. The device name could be anything you like. The upper device name will need to be the same name you use for the host name. If it doesn't match the host name, the ESP add-on will run into issues connecting to your device while flashing on the new config. 
Next is the encryption key. You can grab the encryption key from the old config we made a copy of. Same with the AP password. Finally, you'll need to specify what pins to use for transmit and receive. If you're using the same devices and wiring schematic as me, then you can leave these as GPIO 3 and 1. Also, if you haven't done so already, wire the millimeter wave sensor back onto the D1 Mini. Once you're happy with the config, click save and hit install. You'll be given the option of how you want to upload these files. As this device will be in my kitchen, I want to test to make sure the wireless function works correctly. So I'll be using the wireless option to upload this config. This again will compile all the files and finally upload the config to your device. If all was successful, we should now have a fully functioning presence sensor. From here, we'll need to add a device on Home Assistant Devices and Services page. So click stop, go to settings, and then devices and services. At the top of the page, you should see a new discovered item. To add it, click on configure. Press submit, and it will prompt you for the encryption key. You can grab this from the old config we captured earlier. If you need, add it to an area and then press finish. This time round the device didn't add into Home Assistant correctly and didn't expose any of the entities. However, after a quick restart of Home Assistant and coming back to this page, all the entities were exposed correctly. So going from top to bottom, the first slider changes the amount of time to change from occupied to clear. The second slider is the same but for movement detection. The third and fourth slider is to adjust the sensitivity for both occupancy and movement. Below this we then have a number of binary sensors for movement and occupancy, as well as a signal sensor for detecting how close an object is to the sensor. The binary sensor I'll be using for my automation is one called Occupancy or Movement. So I'm going to copy the entity ID ready to be used as the trigger on the automation. To add the automation, head over to Settings, then Automations and Scenes, then hit Create Automation and start with an empty automation. The trigger we're using here is State and it will be the state of the occupancy and movement binary sensor. In this case, when occupancy or movement is detected. I'll then give it an ID to be used later as a reference in the actions. This trigger can then be duplicated. All I'm going to adjust is the ID and the state for this trigger will be cleared or no occupancy or movement is detected. For the action, I'll be using Choose. The first Choose option will be triggered by the trigger with the ID of Detect. And the action for this option, this will be turning on a light. To do this, I'll use the service Light Turn On. Finally, I'll add the second option. This will be triggered by the trigger with the ID of clear. The action on this option will be to turn the same light as above off. And that's all I have for this video. As mentioned, everything you need to get started with this project will be linked in the description, including the devices used, as well as all the code. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. And as always, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to stay up to date on all my latest content.